Hi everyone. Welcome to today's Moments in Medicine Live. We do this every week on Wednesdays at noon, brought to you by Nebraska Medicine. I'm Heidi Woodard and joining us today is Dr. Doug Neiman and he is a diagnostic radiologist at Nebraska Medicine. Uh, today again, like I said, we're in the Bellevue Medical Clinic in radiology. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to remind our viewers that the information contained in this live chat is to be used for informational purposes only. So if you have specific questions regarding your medical condition or your specific treatment plan, please consult with your own doctor directly. All right, thank you for joining us today. Happy to be here. Uh, to get started, um, I just came in, you'll be happy to know, a couple weeks ago for my own mammogram. I took the advice of the big breakfast event, which we held the first Friday of October, and I got my annual mammogram. But for those who may have not done one before or just have limited knowledge of what a mammogram actually is, can you do your best to describe it in layperson's terms and how long would a patient expect to be receiving the, the actual test? Sure, sure. So um, the mammogram process starts by checking it up front. You typically arrive 10 minutes before your appointment. Then the technologist will go out in the waiting area, grab the patient, come back to the room here and do the exam. And the exam itself is um, four images um, that we get, two of each breast, and it takes about 20 minutes. Okay. And then you're, you're off back to where were you, where you doing before? Sure, I will say I remember one of the rules was if you could avoid wearing lotions or deodorant that that helps with the imaging? That's correct, okay. yes. Yep. And, and before you schedule your appointment, there are some instructions and, and, and things that you'll you'll receive. Okay. So hint, I scheduled mine at like 2, 2.30 and I felt a little bad for my coworkers that day because I was sans deodorant, but I thought it'd better be a better image for you. So. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> All right, and like you said, it's not a long procedure necessarily. No, no, uh, not that I've had one, but it's it's you know a little discomfort with the compression. Sure. Uh, and that's just to make sure the breast doesn't move. And we take the image. You have to hold your breath for four seconds each time. Okay. So uh, it's a very easy procedure to do. Okay, and I understand we're going to have just kind of a, a limited. Uh, sure. Uh, example of what this is. I actually stood here uh, the other day. So explain to me what the machine will do. So this is the, the newest uh, invention, so to speak, when it comes to breast imaging. Uh, this is the 3D MAMO. Mm -hmm. And um, what's different is, as you'll see, the machine will actually move in an arc uh, mm -hmm. from 15 degrees to left to 15 degrees to the right. And that helps to create multiple images through the breast and give it, it gives you a 3D kind of a picture of the breast versus the old fashioned uh, mammography was just um, kind of two images and you couldn't go through uh, all of the images that you get the 3D uh, uh, process and the problem with the 2D images is that you typically would get summation artifact or breast tissue on breast tissue on breast tissue so it made you hard it, it made it harder to see through the breast okay so a lot of women want to know this you know we all come in all, every shape and size does it does the size of the women's breasts make a difference in the the comfort level or the the time that it takes well the time of the take it, it may because uh, sometimes if it's if the breast is too big you may have to get two images where normally it's just one okay so instead of being a 20 minute process it may more be a 30 to 40 minute process Okay, I do want to remind viewers again, I'm Heidi Woodard. I'm joined here today by Dr. Doug Neiman. Um, we are taking questions live, so if you have any, please feel free to comment. Um, at what age should a person have their first mammogram? Uh, so we follow the advice of the American College of Radiology, and that's also echoed by the American Medical Association and other uh, governing boards. Um, age of 40 is when we recommend women start to get their yearly screening mammograms. And that's because the uh, incidence of breast cancer dramatically goes up uh, starting at the age of 40. Okay. Now, you talked about the 3D mammography that's now available. Mm -hmm. um, I was reading and it described it as sliced images. Correct. So, um, again, explain to me, I, I guess a lot of people might have been used to the traditional 2D. Is there a difference in the screening process itself or does it just get better images with 3D? It, yeah, it's better images, better technology, you know, as things advance and... Uh, every direction in medicine. This is just one of those. Um, so, like we were talking before, maybe we can have a demonstration of how the machine actually moves. And when it moves, it takes images through the breast. And so, instead of looking at one 2D image, now you have somewhere between 15 to 30 images uh, or more to look at. And so, you look through each one of those images and it helps you detect cancer. 
when Detect you talk about detecting cancer, I had read that 3D alone, by having this type of mammography, it increases the cancer detection rates by up to 40%. Is that accurate? Yes. So uh, for detecting invasive breast cancer is what we're really trying to do, to okay. do here in the screening process, up to 40% improvement. That's and what correct. do you look for um, as a diagnostic radiologist? What do you look for in the images? I had my, I don't know if, they're if their titles are care technicians, but that's what I'm referring to them as because they mm -hmm. took great care of me when I had this test done. But they were explaining to me that it might be a difference in the coloring and that it's important to go from year to year to year to have that comparison. That's right. So you can think of your mammogram as kind of like a fingerprint. There's so many uh, little things inside the breast that show up on the x-ray. And so when we look at the image, it's, it's all gray. It's white to gray or to black. Um, and so it depends on, you know, time of the month, um, perhaps some dietary issues, but your breast can change slightly from one year to the next. And so you may find something um, 10 years down the road that looks suspicious, but when you go back and review all the previous mammograms, you realize it was there before. Mm -hmm. uh, so therefore, it cannot be a cancer. Uh, and that's one of the greatest tools we have as radiologists is comparisons. So that's why it's recommended we get, uh, we recommend the uh, screen mammogram every year starting at the age of 40. And I know with October, you know, breast cancer is front and center of a lot of um, women's minds and men. We should point out that men can also have breast cancer and that's a, yes. that's a fact that not everybody knows. Um, so it's worth mentioning. Um, I will say that I, my family physician is through Nebraska Medicine as well. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, slightly uh, younger than 40 when I received my first because of my family history. Okay. But I had a lump and that was the reason why I went in initially. Um, there is some reassurance to women while, that while you should never ignore lumps, in my case, you know, it was nothing to be overly concerned with. I got the screening, it was determined that there was no cancerous cells found. Um, but I would assume you'd give advice like that to your patients, that if you have a lump, talk to your doctor, do not delay. Exactly. Um, and then, you know, we screen mammograms are at the age of 40, but for patients who are high risk, and that's um, mostly you'll, you'd know that through family history, mm -hmm. uh, various genetic conditions. Uh, mammogram can be started at the age of 30 for those who are in high risk, but the majority of patients that we see, they're all screeners and average risk. Okay. So, but yeah, any time you have a, a, a lump mm -hmm. or pain or, or something that's out of the normal, uh, definitely go see your physician. Okay. We had a question come in and it was actually before we started the live chat. It came in when we were just promoting the fact that we were doing this today. And it was a woman who said that she had had a mammogram at 50 years old. But due to circumstances, she didn't clarify what those were, but it could be insurance, it could be financial. Sure. Due to circumstances, she was not going to be able to necessarily do it every year. And she wanted to know your advice if you couldn't do it every year. Well, yeah, my recommendation is always to, you know, go along with American College of Radiology mm -hmm. and recommend that we do a screen mammogram every year. Um, now, for whatever circumstances that she may be in, perhaps it's financial. There are... Uh, options in the state of Nebraska. There's a one that's called uh, Every Woman Matters mm -hmm. uh, and you can go to their webpage and, and, and look at that but there's financial assistance programs out there. And so this kind of stems into my next question. Um, another fact, uh, other than skin cancer, breast cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer among American women. Correct. And so my follow-up to that is your advice to any woman who may be on the fence um, I don't know if it's, you know, potentially due to fear. As you can see, this is not too intimidating. I can speak from experience. It's a pretty quick screening. Um, I think that the trepidation is more in the waiting, you know, the waiting to know the results. Sure. And I'll give a plug for the patient portal because you can get your results through Nebraska Medicine's patient portal. There you go. Almost immediate. I mean, I, I was amazed it was the same day that I received um, the reassurance that everything was fine. Yeah. So what I would recommend is that... Um, you know, you get your screening mammograms every year, and that's been shown to decrease mortality from breast cancer by 40%. Wow. So uh, it's important to you, it's important to your family, friends, loved ones, that you you'd have this done. Great. So you might be asking, okay, you've convinced me. How do I go about scheduling my mammogram? Um, we've got a couple ways. There's a phone number, a 1-800 number, which is one 800 922 Zero 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 zero. Again, that's one eight hundred nine two two zero 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 zero. If you'd rather just look online, right straight from your phone, I will say that there's 
um, online mammography scheduling now, which is relatively new. You can go to nebraskamedicine.com forward slash mammo, M-A-M-M-O. And that will get you to one of two options um, pretty quickly. So I think we've covered the gist of it today, and I wanted to know if there was any, anything else you'd like to add before we wrap things up, knowing that you've got some interested viewers watching today. Well, I, I would say that uh, Nebraska Medicine, the three campuses where we do uh, breast imaging at Village Point, the main campus in here at Bellevue, we all uh, utilize 3D mammography, so. Wonderful. So you can go to any three of those locations, the main campus, Village Point, or where we are here, Nebraska Medicine, uh, Bellevue Medical Center. Um, great. Again, we will see you potentially next Wednesday. Please join in again. We love having repeat viewers. Um, again, it'll be noon uh, for our next Moments in Medicine Live. And I'd like to thank Dr. Neiman again and all of his staff here at Bellevue Medical Center. Have a good rest.